Okay, Professor Robit here. Today I want to see the highway drainage. So highway drainage is a process of water removing and controlling the excess surface and subsurface water within the road or of the right of the way. For that adequate drainage is essential for protection of the investment made in a highway structures. Therefore, the design, construction, maintenance of an appropriate highway drainage system is one of the most important tasks of a highway engineer. So, it is important to provide an effective drainage system for all the category of road, irrespective if it is rural roads or in urban roads, in order to prevent early water deterioration and maintenance failure of various components of the road, including the water payment or carriage fee. So, this is today we are going to see this all the contents. So, highway drainage is process of removing and controlling the excess surface and subsoil water within the right of way. It includes, it includes interception and diversion of the water from the road surface and the subgrade. So, if you are talking about the significance or the importance the surface uh, drainage system enables to drain the water from the pavement surface and the shoulder during the rains and the divert it to the roadside drain such that entry of the water into the pavement layers and separate soil is minimized. During the rains, one portion of the rain water flows along the surface as a runoff water and the remaining portion of the water percolates through the soil mass and under that action of the gravity until it reaches the, the what we call so called ground water table. So, the removal and the diversion of the surface water from the road and adjoining the land termed as surface drainage. So, today we are going to see about the surface drainage and subsurface. So, removal of the removal and diversion of the surface water from the road and adjoining land is what term, termed as surface drainage. So, surface drainage of the road is to be affected with the help of well designed and constructed surface drainage system consists of components such as it might be first uh, camber or cross slip of the pavement surface uh, show and uh, the shoulder roadside drainage cross drainage structures such as culvert and the bridges so then next is subsur uh, or subsurface drainage systems the diversion or the removal of that excess solid water from the subgrade is termed as sub subsurface drainage. Here, the subsurface drainage system enables what intercept the seepage flow of the water and divert the same away from the roadway to the nearest whatever the water resource you find. The subsurface drainage system also helps in lowering the water, ground water level well below the subgrade, and in that sense, it in controlling the capillary rise of the water. So, as you see in the increase in the moisture content like if you when you talk about the significance or the importance an increase in moisture content causes the or decrease in the strength of the stability of the soil mass which supports the what the pavement layer here the variations in the soil strength and the magnitude of the deem of formation due to the application of the traffic load with the variations in the what moisture content depend on the soil type and the mode of the stress applications the highway drain is importance of some following reasons like excess moisture in the soil separate causes considerable lowering of its stability then the thickness required of the pavement structure is designed considering the what low, lowest stability of the strength value of the subgrade soil corresponding to the what highest possible moisture content in the soil then if the stability of the subgrade soil falls below the design value the pavement is likely to be filled due to the subgrade failure then you have to see into the highway maintenance into that. So, the excess water on the shoulder and the pavement edges causes what considerable damage to the pavement structures. Like stagnation of the water on the pavement surface or edge and increase in the moisture content in the pavement layers can cause what the reduction in strength characteristics of the moist most of the flexible pavement component. Here also sustainable contact of water like with bitumen pavement causes what failure due to the stripping of the bitumen from the aggregate 
or losing like that leads what detachment of some bituminous pavement layer and the formation of the portos so as in in clay soil variations in uh, moisture content causes considerable variation in the what volume of the subgrade like alternate swelling and shrinking of the supporting layer may also contribute to the what pavement failures in the form of cracking so one of the most important types of flexible failure due to the poor drainage is the the progressive development of undulations on the road surface or we called unevenness in the form of what rutting along the wheel path of heavy wake heavy wheels and the formation of the waves of waves and the corrugations yes sir so in that sense the erosion of the soil from the top and unsurfaced road and the slopes of the embankment cut and hill side is also due to the surface water only so when you go for the colder regions the presence of water in the subgrade and the continuous supply of the water from the ground water here also the causes the considerable damage the pavement due to the frost action so in that reason it's important to have the proper drainage systems so the requirement of the highway drainage system is what the surface water from the whatever the carriage way and the shoulders should what effectively be drained off without what allowing it to the percolate or filtrate into the subgrade and weaken the soil the surface water from the next is adjoining the land should be prevented from the entry of the road side yes sir no then the side drain should be have a sufficient capacity uh, and uh, and longitudinal slope to carry the away from the all the surface water collected from the roadway uh, then flow of uh, whatever the surface water across the road and the shoulder along the slopes should not cause any erosion or a form cross ruts these are the what some requirements even it is if the water logged areas especially what uh, we can call precaution should be taken especially in the determinal salts are present in the or if the flood is flooding is likely to occur a seepage another source of the underground water should be effectively what we have to intercepted drained off by the suitable surface sub surface drainage systems this is the what the the requirement of the what when you want to construct the highway drainage next is that uh, surface drainage system as you know that the during the rains the part of the rain water flow on the surface and the part of it percolate through the what the soil mass and the gravitational water until it reaches the ground water below the water table that what i explained before again the removal and the diversion of the surface water from the road way and the adjoining land termed as surface water so here these are the different method of surface drainage by like one is by providing the long tunnel side drainage next having the catch basins or inlets in the urban areas providing the dam proof courses providing the pop, proper camber or cross slopes providing sufficient slope to the uh, sides even in the form of the embankment when you have the the cross slope has to be proper keeping the level of the carriage way at least 60 cm above from the highest flood level these are the some methods you can adopt what to providing the proper sub surface drainage so here is the one when you have the side drains on a road when you provide the embankments you can see that the side drain here borrow pit and this slopes here the of uh, even the camber we have some slope the shoulder has to be more sloper than the camber then it has to be drained out to the long term drainage or side drainage what you provided here so in case of the so the road side drains of the highways passing through the water rural areas you go are generally open and unlined so drains of like you, see, you might see in, beside the national highway and all the drains are on of trapezoidal shapes cut to suitable cross sections and long term slopes are provided there 
these side drains are provided in parallel to the what road alignment and hence these are also called as what do you call long drill drains on plain terrain with embankment the long drill drains are what provided on the both the sides beyond with the toe of the embankment okay even in this picture you can find that however if the road passes through the like slope terrain uh, with the cross slope what you, when you call more than 4% the long drill drain may be provided on one side only beyond the toe of the embankment or along the higher side of the slope okay and this is the next is side drones for the road in cutting so in cutting that what long drill drains are installed on either side of the formations that we can see here but in places where there is a restriction of the space or a construction of uh, deep open drains may be undesirable and this is particularly true when the road formation is what in cutting in such changes what the drainage trenches of suitable depth and the cross sections are dug and properly filled with layers of filter material consisting of the coarse sand and gravel uh, to form that uh, covered drain and when you go for the in urbans uh, on urban roads because of the limitations of the land width and also due to the presence of footpath the dividing islands and other road facilities it is necessary to provide underground long tunnel drains the water drained from the what pavement surface can be carried forward along the underground long tunnel drains installed between the that curb installed between the the curb and let me show the picture so this is the curb and the what the pavement for the shorter distance so this water may be collected what in the catch pits and suitable intervals lead through the what underground drainage pipes sections of what what going to find typical catch pit with the grating preventing the entry of the the rubbish into the drainage systems from the urban road for drainage of surface is all of important in a hilly roads too you can see then here this is a footpath we have the slopes provided so they can drain out in inside this is the curve of opening here inside is having the road next is a shoulder drainage this is the where the shoulder drainage comes from the picture so you have the pavement the shoulder has, has to be obviously the more inclined compared to the what the pavement surface more inclined in the sense if the pavement having the 4% of the uh, to 1.5% as the cross slopes that has to be 2 or 2.5 so that is again depend upon the, the rainfall or the catchment area and all the other data the hydrological data it required next median except in a median less than like 5 meter wide it is not desirable to drain the median you know towards the pavement surface obviously then 1.2 or 1 meter wide median provided the curbs are always a paved if it is 1.8 to 5 meter wide in median usually the turf or a ground so that the surface water could not run towards the pavement maybe with or without a curbs it is provided Uh, as I explained, what is the subsurface uh, drainage system? It is the removal of or diversion of excess water from the subgrade, is termed as subsurface water. Here, the change in moisture of subgrade is caused by the following: like it might be fluctuation in the groundwater table, seepage of the seepage flow of the water, uh, percolation or penetration of the rainwater, uh, and the capillary effect. In subsurface uh, drainage, it is what practice to keep the variations of the moisture in the subgrade as minimum as possible so here the changes in the moisture content on a subgrade as you see that i told you like it's for the fluctuations groundwater table seepage flow and in percolation of the water or capillary action 
In subsurface drainage of the highways, it is attempted to what? keep the variations of the motion in subgrade as minimum. Okay, however, only the gravitational water can be drained by usually drainage systems. When the road is like why uh, when you use subsurface drainage, when the road is in cutting and the water seepage from the sides, okay, when the road is near to the foot or the hill is likely to be what damaged by water flowing down the hill. Like you, when you see the Amboli hut and all, when the road is passing through the plain area and the water is likely to be accumulated on the sides, okay, and when where the water rise up to subgrade by the capital traction and where subgrade soil is affected by the drain passing near the road. So, how to be this controlled? Okay, this is a controlled by lowering the water table, controlling the seepage flow, and controlling the capillary water. So, how the lowering? Okay, here we have the image. You can see that it is in left side, original ground water level, and this is the clay seal. And the, here we have the filter sand. So, here the highest level of the water table should be fairly what below the level of the subgrade. In order to that, the subgrade and the pavement layer are subject to the water excess moisture. From the practical consideration, it is suggested that what the water table should be kept at least how much 1 to 1.2 meter below the subgrade. What the subgrade is the first layer, what you call. In the, in the places where the water table is high, like almost at the ground level at the times, then what the best remedy is to key to take the what road formation of the embankment height or not less than 1.2 to 1.5 meter above the ground level. When the formation is to be at or below the general ground level, at the cutting it is necessary to lower the water table so as to keep the subgrid as what uh, dry as possible. If the soil is really or if you find the relative more permeable, it may not possible to lower the high water level by merely construction of long drill drainage trenches, what we call as surface drainage systems, uh, trenches with the drain pipes and the filter sand. So, depth of the trench should depend upon the water required lowering of the water table, the distance between the drainage trenches and the soil tap. If it is the soil is relatively less permeable, then what the lower of the groundwater level may not be adequate under the center of the pavement or in the between the two long tunnel drainage trenches. Hence, in here, in addition to the long tunnel drainage trenches, transverse drainage have to be installed at a suitable interval. Here you can see in this picture. In these conditions, what? As I explained, the transfer drainage has to be installed at a suitable interval in order to effectively drain off the water and thus to level the water table up to the level of the transfer drainage consisting of the like uh, perforated pipes. So, where the moisture can where the water can easily get into there. A typical sketch of this water as is shown here on the right side, okay, uh, at the bottom, the water. with the long term transfer range of effect of lowering the water table in case of the water the soil with the low permeability. The next is what controlling the seepage, controlling seepage flow when the the ground as well as the imper, uh, impervious strata below or a sloping the seepage flow is likely to exist. The seepage zone is at the depth less than what around 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 meter from the subgrade level. The long drain pipe drain is trenches is filled with the what filter material and the clay seal may be constructed to interact with the seepage flow. Here, the method uh, by which the seepage like to be lowered to the some desired depth, and by this also water. Controlling of the capillary rise. Here, if the water reaches to the subgrade due to the capillary rise is likely to be removed, it is possible to solve like 
problem by arresting the capillary rise instead of the lowering the water table. So the capillary rise may be checked by providing what suitable capillary cut of by one of two methods, namely like granular capillary cut off, and second is impermeable capillary cut off. So in case of the granulary what uh, we call here, you can check it in the first figure, granular capillary cut off, a layer of and the first top picture I am talking about, a layer of granular material of suitable thickness is provided during the construction of the embankment between the subgrade and the, or the highest layer of the subsurface water table. Then the thickness of the granular capillary cut off layer should be sufficiently higher than what anticipated capillary rise with the within the granular layer so that the capillary water cannot rise the above the cutoff layer that is the one that is the first one in case of imp what impermeable capillary cutoff uh, the membrane or bituminous layer is inserted the black layer what you can see in the place of the granular blanket during the construction of the embankment so no point in making the other stuff here. Next is design of subsurface drainage system. Here, the size, whatever, then the spacing of the separate drainage system it would depend upon the quality of the water to be drained off, and the type of soil, and the type of the drains. And here, as in mostly. This is decided based on the experience and the other practical considerations. However, a proper filler material should be used for backfilling the drainage trenches and also for the use in the all subsurface systems. The filter material used in the subsurface should be designed to have a sufficient permeability offering the negligible resistance to the flow and also resist the flow of the what foundation soil resulting in soil piping. So, here are the different steps to be followed like uh, designing the drawn uh, grain size distribution, corner log scale passing the what person is passing versus practical size for the foundation for from find the D15 size of the function. Here is the chart C. Here that what the drainage slope of the embankment cutting the hill sides are uh, all utmost importance and the preventing the instability of the soils and the slides, the soaking of the soils causes the increase in the stress and reduction in the strength. Hence, an efficient network of surface drainage systems consists of interceptable intercepting drains and slope drains to be kept keep the slopes properly drained the network of such drains is useful when case of hill slides and the deep cutting of the high embankment to sing to that in this figure what do you mention the filter material is used in subsurface should be designed to have a sufficient perimeter of furling negligible resistance to the flow the first is on grain size distribution chart like this percentage of passing versus particle size in a log scale a curve of the foundation soil and the find the value of the d15 size of the foundation material and plot a point of particular size of five times the d15 the foundation to represent a lower limit of the d15 Add, as you can see is in a chart here And this will fulfill the, fulfill the condition of adequate permeability given by the what formula D15 of the filter divided by the D15 of the foundation, it should be always greater than the 5. And lastly, to fulfill the condition of uh, preventing piping, D15 of the filter to the D85 of the foundation should be less than 5. After that, hence the product of the water represent the upper limit of the D15 size of the filter given by 5 times the D of 85 of the foundations 
and the find the size of the perforations in the drain pipe or the gap in the open jointed pipes and let this to be the what dp and plot the point of the represent the dat5 size of filter given by the size of 2 dp and hence the shaded point obtained represent what of the shaded point is the region with the grain size distribution curve of satisfactory filter material should lie okay on this we have some problems to be solved on our surface drainage systems that we can see in the next class okay thank you for your patience hearing